Okay, we're getting ready to do this wheel here. Get them out on the fork. Now this axle here is how I normally put them in, where it comes in from the right side and sticks out the left. And I'm looking in the Harley Parts book here, which is for the uh, FXR, which is the same as an FX. For the year range of the front end, which is 84 to 86, 87, right in that area. So it shows the axle coming in from the left side. The speedometer is on the right side, which is what it is over there. And it shows a spacer right here, which is this part number here which is what this one right here is. It's a 3 8 spacer. So this is what's supposed to be in there. Now the axle kit that we bought, or this is, has this spacer in there, which is completely different. So I don't know what's going on here. There's something obviously wrong. Now the other thing is we have a spacer already inside the wheel right there, which is probably 3 8 already. All right, so they're not showing a secondary spacer. The axle, the speedometer drives a spacer in itself. So 19, it should be a seal. Yes, soil seal. So it's only showing the one spacer, which is the one that's already inside the wheel, or inside the seal right here. So they're showing no spacer. This axle comes in from this side, so this here is what would clamp into your fork right here. But you can see how the fork is cut out right under here and not cut out on this side, which usually means the axle comes in from this side and this is where the speedometer drive is. But this bike is opposite. Obviously this is left, left side fork because the caliper is going to the back, not the front. All right, so we're gonna be playing with this a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and Put the wheel on the top of the stool here and then figure out what goes what because this stuff doesn't look normal to me. Typical uh, 80s junk, nothing fits right. I'm used to 70s on back which is conventional design. This is not conventional for normal Harley. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put this stuff together. Hopefully this will all fit together. We'll find out, I guess. Almost acorn nuts down here, so we're doing acorn nuts. Axle caps are probably cut out for a different size, I'm assuming, which will dictate which way the axle goes in anyway. So it already looks like it's going to be like this over here, not how the book shows, because this is a smaller diameter here, which is just the opposite of what the book shows. What a shocker, huh? So you have to use your brain to figure this stuff out, not believe everything you see or read. If it doesn't look right, it ain't right. Okay, obviously, there's no doubt about this the axle goes in the direction I have it. That's a small hole, that's a big hole. Big axle, small thread. There you go. So, the axle goes in conventional way from the right side not on the left there's gonna to have to be a spacer here so it's about that big right there will probably work so the book is wrong that's why I don't go buy these books hundred percent I don't go buy anything hundred percent it either fits or it doesn't okay so let's see how it's gonna fit the way I have it set up right now which I think is correct
close. Nope, we are too, too high. Stool is too high, bike's too low. So come up with something else to stand the tire up onto. This isn't gonna fly. All right, so we can get something different. So the famous milk crate. Yeah, that'll work. <coughs> okay, stuff is cleared so I can lower the bike a little bit as needed. about two inches. Can lift that a little bit. Close. Okay, drive unit has a little drive tang here that has to go inside the, the disc brake rotor to work. So you gotta make sure you put it where it belongs. You slip the wheel in here. And we're already not gonna work. Okay. There's no damn way it's going to go the way it is. So See the drive unit's right here. You can see how it's supposed to go right there. It ain't gonna go right there. It's cut out over here on this side to go in this direction. So this drive unit here is the wrong one. So we have to take this drive unit and do a different deal. The next problem is, is the tire is gonna be wrong. Okay, right now the tire is put on the rack wrong. See how the arrow's going forward here? So the wheel, the tire is on the wheel correctly. It's just everything's ass backwards. Now this here is an earlier front, earlier wheel. This is a 78 to 83 front wheel and we're using 84 to 86 front end. So we're mixing and matching components a little bit and that is causing issues with the design. Okay, so this goes this direction now. Now, this drive unit is in the wrong spot. So it has to be reversed up to be high instead of low. Now, easily drive units will not clear that direction and it will not clear that way. It has to be on the bottom like this. The problem with this is that the drive is going the wrong direction. So this here drive is wrong for the application. So this does not work. Now what drive did we buy here? We have a 73 drive unit which is made to go on the right side wheel, not the left side. We're going to have to switch over to a different drive, which is going to cause a whole another group of problems because now the speedometer will be the wrong ratio because these are usually a different ratio than the earlier speedos. So that might cause some issues on that. But either way, this drive unit is wrong. I have to get a correct drive unit, which I don't think I have sitting around here right now. So I'm going to go check into that. The dimension of this might be a little bit different also, which would be a, another problem. Lots and lots of problems. Okay, I'm going to go check the ratios of this stuff and compare it to what I'm going to have to put on the bike. I'll see what's different. So I'll be back. Okay, we're back. We're looking at speedometer drives. So this drive unit here is the 84A number drive unit, which is the one that we need to buy fit the bike. Now the way I double checked it was this here's the early drive unit. 
This is my old uh, custom chrome catalog back from 03, back when I was a dealer with them. So I wrote down all the dimensions of the drives in here. So this gives you the drive ratios. And I also wrote down the dimensions of what the overall thickness is and how much the spacer is sticking out in the thing. So that one has a 268 spacer and a 789 total width right there. And then if you read it, it's a 2 and 5 eighths ratio. So when you go down the list of ratios here, you see a 2 and 5 eighths ratio right here. It's a left hand drive, which is what we need. We had a right hand drive, which is this one. So this one is a 361 on the seal side, 940 overall width. So it's going to be longer on this side here by a little bit. A couple, of, about 160 thou difference taller. All right, so that's going to be what we have to use. Now, I don't know how that's going to fit in our, our installation. My guess is I'm going to have to cut the thing down to be this dimension here, which is going to be real fun to do. But uh, I think it's going to be so wide that uh, this tang will come out of engagement, so it won't work. Which will be a major problem, obviously. Meantime, I'm going to take uh, this spacer here, which is 925 in width, which is slightly less than what this one is, 940. So this here should give me the... at least I can mock it up and see what's going to work. So... I don't know any, way, any other way of making this work. Like I said, I'm going to wind up probably having to cut the other drive unit down. Now, this is probably the number here. Where's the number of the drive unit we need? It's a 389 number. 389, 389. It's this picture right here. So it looks like this, which looks pretty close to what this one is, just a mirror image of it. Let's see, it says 350 tall, and this one is a lot less than 350, but my book shows it's 361. It's a hundred thou difference, so you take out a hundred thou of engagement on this tang right here, and that's going to want to disengage on you. All right, so I might wind up doing something different, I'm not sure. Either way, I'm going to have to draw, I'll have to order up one of these drive units, I don't have that particular one in stock. So I'm going to take this one here and make it work with this for now. That's all you can do. Order up the one I need. Hopefully one's available nearby. If not, it'll take a while to get one, a week or so. Best thing I'll keep this from work on the bike. The 3A space here is the one that's in right here, right here. I already had that in there. And I used one with a lip on it so it stays in the wheel and fall out. I like to lay it when it doesn't have a lip on it. Okay, so this one here, we're just going to stuff it in here. Like this. Make sure the seal's good. Okay, that should duplicate the drive. And hopefully the wheel will sit centered. So right now... If it looks like it was 30 thou wider, it wouldn't fit. That's about all the inplay I got between the, the sliders. We don't want to spread the sliders apart like that because it binds up the, the bushings and stuff inside. Here's the axle I don't want to fit inside the fork. What a shocker. Call it chrome buildup. Another problem. Let's see if things fit together here. No, they don't fit. Not even close. There, trying to go in. 
definitely has an issue with chrome. And that's tight too. Maybe the nut's just too tight. It's definitely tight on the chrome too. Snug fit on that part. Now we go over on this side. Yeah, it's not even wanting to go in. Ugh. Okay, wipe off the grease. Yep, not even close. Not gonna fit. So we have an axle that does not fit a fork because of too much stupid ass chrome on everything. See how the axle will not go up inside the fork tube fork slider? See it won't go up. Too big a diameter. Fits on the axle cap okay. Now we had the same problem over here. But this one here was close enough that it, it kind of fits in there. It's also tight though, but it would mush itself in, I guess you would say. This is going to be a problem. So, it's called heavy, heavy chrome buildup. So the cap is all right. That fits. It's just the top part of the slider doesn't. And of course that's not something we check before we put the whole damn thing together because you don't expect it to be a problem. So we have two options. Cut the axle down or cut the fork to fit like it should fit. Both require cutting chrome. Now if you cut the axle down then it'll be unless it's hundred percent inside the slider here which in this case it looks like it would be wouldn't work now we're not sure exactly what length this is going to be looks like this would be flush at best see it'd be too much axle sticking out even be able to tighten it down it should be about here which means this should be sticking out a little bit on the outside edge which is means this axle is not even a right axle because we need a longer shoulder here. You can't put a spacer inside the pinch clamp, it doesn't work that way. So this axle is not really going to work either. One more thing that doesn't fit. Alright, so I have to go determine what axle this is. Is it the early axle? Or is a brand new late axle? I don't know. But it appears it's not going to fly either. Yeah. More stuff not fitting. Alright, I get to go investigate the axles now. I got to hand investigate every piece on this bike, it looks like. At least everything near a piece of chrome. Alright, we'll be back. Okay, here's the axle I found. This is the one that was in it. This is, I think, a, either a show axle or a Kayaba axle. I think it's a show axle. That's what this is supposed to be. So this must be a Kayaba axle, which is 73, uh, 4. Sportster front end, FX. This here is a 39 millimeter axle off a newer bike, which is 90s for me, is new. So, this one here has the correct large hole size all the way across, what we need here. 
three quarter inch. This one's neck down here, so it's different. But what is different is this is actually smaller diameter than these two on the shank, so it fits the fork, which is kind of weird. So this one here is the correct length. It gives me support in the axle. The threads don't come out the other side, like or the shoulder doesn't come out the side of the axle. And this shoulder here will just peek out of here, so it'll just fit in like it's supposed to. So this one here would work if I had one of these, but the problem is the diameter here is too big. Still doesn't fit. At least on that side. And this side doesn't fit either. Okay. Now this axle here is the wrong overall length for the sh uh, fork. The thread is about right. The shank's about right, and this part sticks way the hell out. But the key thing is it's cut down smaller so it fits into the fork. So it actually does fit in here like that. So my guess is they made a change in 84 on these axles on the shoulder size over here. So it goes in like that. So obviously there's enough room for a nut. It fits here. You'd have to work out the spacer alignment here. The problem is it's neck down here, which doesn't work. So also kind of floats a little bit. And it's yeah, it's about the maximum you go there. So I think the spacer and the hub would be a little bit off too, but oh well. So I need something that has this size um, shoulder out here. And then I need to be a three-quarter inch all the way across like this one. So there's the problem. So multiple axles and none of these fit. So I'm trying to find out which one's in the book. And of course they're all lots of different dimensions and unknown sizes. I need to get a length. Just like I need to spin on a drive. I could just put one of these axles in there. That would work good. That would be long enough to go all the way across and do what we need to do. That would work. But I don't think that's the right one either. Okay, so we need an overall length. Now, I don't know what they're measuring. I bet you're measuring tip to tip, which is worthless for measuring axles because what it sticks outside doesn't matter. It's what fits between the bearings is what matters. Okay, so right now, I need an axle overall length of. About nine and three eighths inches. So they got nine and seven eighths, which is obviously neck down. That'd be this one here. And that one is about right. It's longer. And nine and seven eighths again, cut down there. That does not work. These here are earlier axles over here, 9 and 7 16, so that would work. So this is about right, but see this here looks like the same thing we had. It's way too short, so we need this longer length in here. So you can look up what this number here is, 48278 something. 482, what is the number? 482797. Right here, 797. That would be the correct early one, which is what we're not using. This here's the other one, 98. That's what we should have over there in the pile. They're not even showing that axle, so we don't know what dimension it is. Now what do they got for an 84? Nothing. Axle only. FXR 87, nope, wrong year. 84 86 WG, that would be wrong. That's a wide line. So, this book here, I'm not showing the axle I need. Wonderful. What a shocker, right? Okay, so I can make this axle work. Except it's not chromed, looks like crap, and it's too big. I can turn this down, then we have to sit and have it chromed. Hopefully, come back not screwed up. Yeah, good luck on that one. And we make our own axle, that's an option. Or I gotta look in a different book and try to find something else. So I'm gonna go hunting for some more axles and figure out what I can come up with. Alright, back on this wheel. 
Uh, I have to order an axle up. I only found one company so far that has it. Maybe. It's a week away. Problem when you don't have parts in stock. That's why I like stock and inventory, so I don't have these problems. It's already on the shelf, but even my use supply doesn't work. So for now, I'm going to mock it up with the uh, this 39 millimeter axle. We'll make it work with that. At least I can put it together. See what happens. <sighs> Find some other problem. I'm sure something else will pop up. Alright. Now, access spaces don't want to fit. There we go. This side. Damn it. There it goes. Tightly, but it went. Looks like the wheel's too far to the left. Also, wonderful. That'll be another problem. Those went down. I'm going to pull the axle caps down fairly even. I put my fingernail on the other side so I can tell when I'm getting close. Oh, this one's going to bottom out because it's the wrong size. Yeah. That centered it up when I did that because the axle has a big hole and the axle small so it drops down like this. That's what kicked it way over. So even though I still have a gap in here, when I pulled it in flat, it's at least pulled it in, drawed it in. It'll flip over when I put weight to it, but you can see now it kind of centered up where it belongs. Looks pretty even. That's a plus. Looks like this. Uh, this should only be about uh, twenty thou or fifteen thou too narrow, ten fifteen. So shouldn't be really that noticeable. All right, so that at least bolts together that way, which is not how the book shows. Like I said, the book shows the axle coming in from this side, which is definitely not going to work. Of course, nothing else worked here either. So I took about two and a half hours to put a wheel on a front end. That's pretty good, huh? And we still can't do it correctly. Okay, we're not even gonna get, we're not even gonna attempt to get to the fender. That's going to be a whole another bucket of worms. So we're going to leave that at that point. Still have not found the bolts for this. Not that I'm really looking for them. They're around here somewhere because I pulled them out already. Maybe stuck them in his pocket and took it home with him. That might have happened. Okay, we need to put some handlebars on it. So he has these big tall ass bars up there he wants to use right there. So I'm going to use some shorter risers for now as a mock up. See if he likes them. That'd be these ones right here. Of course, this is all subject to change. Seems to be that way with everything around here, so. Oh, I don't like that. Okay. 
Let me order five more of them for you to choose from. Of course, these I had in stock, so no big deal. Of course, now they're open now. Oh, they are his favorite color, chrome. Okay, these take a through bolt. See the hex head in there? That means the bolt goes through. Not an Allen bolt either. Hex head. These hex heads screwed in from the bottom, so they're going to be too short. They wouldn't be long enough to go all the way through the tree. So we'll have to get some longer ones to make that work. So that looks like a bolt about that long, which is about four inches probably. So we get some four inch long half inch bolts. Got those in your back pocket, don't you? Couldn't look at my junk box right here. It looks like one right there. There, how's that? That looks pretty close too. Perfect. There's one. I think we'll have two in my junk box. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's see, junk box. Look at that. That'll work. He likes black, right? Now we got two black ones. That ugly ass one. Of course, I have two of those also. So I got two and two. We use the black ones. He likes black. Got a lot of black on this black, right? You know, I need a couple nuts to go with these. Let's see here. Yeah, junk nut box. So this is why you got to keep your junk laying around. We can find it at some point when you need it. There's a nice new nut. We got one right next to it. Perfect. Now we're getting too clean looking. Now we're going to have to go with the clean looking ones so the nuts don't conflict. See, there you go. Alright, we'll try this combination, see how it works. We'll be a slightly further along on this project. Okay, so here's our washer. Now when you put these on, the thin part goes to the back. Don't put them on backwards like that. Seen that done. Looks like crap. That's a perfect length. Look at that. Allen's don't work in this application either. Forgetting. Now the real hardware is going to be uh, chrome plated and urethane bushings. But for mock up, we're not going to do that. There we go, a couple of floors. bolts are slightly short. Yeah, they come in just right when you tie them up though. Okay. Three quarter inch. Top riser clamp needs to go on, and the handlebars. Need something we can hold up for the handlebars. Okay, the riser clamp is buried someplace around here. It resembles this.
Okay, they make these skirted and unskirted. Skirted means it has this piece right here, so it hides the handlebar when it goes up over it like that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see the bar. So this is a little bit cleaner looking. Now, this didn't come with any hardware, so we have to come up with hardware for all this now. So that goes under just like that. Should look nice and clean. All right, so now I need some Allen bolts, because these take Allens. Or 12-point. I like 12-point better, but... We'll find some balance. All right, I'll be back.